Hi everyone, this video is meant to help you get better at simplifying expressions that contain square roots, particularly expressions that you might end up with at the end of using the quadratic formula and you're trying to simplify to let's say get your final two solutions and we want exact answers. So for example, four plus or minus the square root of 12 divided by six. Now I know a lot of times students have been taught in earlier math classes to simplify square roots by making a factor tree. And there's nothing wrong with the factor tree method. However, when you get to higher math courses, sometimes there's just not time to make a factor tree, especially when that number inside the square root is a really large number. I'm gonna do two examples showing you one, this one with just a 12, and then another one with a larger number so you can kind of compare. So what I recommend doing instead of a factor tree is to think about your perfect squares. So for example, one squared, one times one is going to be one. So that's our first perfect square. Two squared, two times two is four. Three squared, three times three is nine. Four squared, four times four is 16. Five squared, five times five is 25, and so on. We could, of course, make this into a, a much longer list. So here are the beginning few perfect squares. And when we're simplifying a square root, we're looking for a number off of this list, a perfect square that is going to divide into the number inside the square root evenly. And that number inside the square root is called the radicand, if we're looking at increasing our mathematical vocabulary. So we have the square root of 12. And as I look at my list of perfect squares, I want the largest perfect square that divides evenly into 12. And in that case, this would be four. So I'm gonna rewrite 12. Four divides into 12 three times. So I'm rewriting 12 as four times three. Basically, I'm factoring 12. And then one of our properties of radicals can be used here because we have multiplication, we can rewrite this as the square root of four times the square root of three. And then the square root of four can be simplified to be two, but the square root of three cannot be simplified. Three is not a perfect square. Therefore, our simplified answer for the square root of 12 is two times the square root of three. So when I come back over here to simplify my expression, I rewrite the square root of 12 as two times the square root of three, all divided by six. So I have simplified the square root. Now, I do need to simplify this a bit further, and I'm gonna show you multiple ways of doing this so you can pick the method that you like best. One option is to recognize that you have this four and this two in front of the square root, as well as this six, and they are all divisible by two. So you can divide two into all of those values. Two divides into four twice, two divides into two once, and two divides into six three times. So that would be one way of arriving at an answer of two plus or minus the square root of three, because we don't need to write the one, all divided by three. And remember, we're not gonna be dividing two into the radical, into the square root, because we, we can't divide whole numbers into radicals. We can only divide radicals by other radicals. However, I do find that a lot of times students do this method of simplification without really understanding why this works. So I am going to backtrack to explain that. The reason this method of simplification works is because we technically have two terms in the numerator. Four is the first term and two square root of three is the second term. And they have in common a greatest common factor. So we're really recognizing that there's a GCF, a greatest common factor of a two, and we are going to factor out a two from the numerator. So if I factor out a two, uh, from four, I'll be left with two, and if I factor out the two from the two square root of three, I'm just left with the square root of three. And now that I have multiplication here, two times this quantity, then I can divide two into six three times. So that's really why that method of simplification works. It's really that you are factoring out a value from the numerator and then simplifying. 
So that's another way of, of arriving at this final simplified form. And then of course, we could also write this as two separate terms. So I can recognize that I'm really dividing both of these terms in the numerator by three. So I could also write this as two thirds plus or minus the square root of three over three. This would be an acceptable alternative way of writing your answer. Let's do another one with a larger radicand, a larger number inside the square root. Eight plus or minus the square root of 96, all divided by 10. So this time 96 is our radicand, it's a larger number. And again, we could do a factor tree, but we're trying to avoid that, see if we can come up with a, uh, a more efficient method of simplifying. So I am going to take a look at those perfect squares and I'm looking for the largest perfect square that would divide evenly into 96. And this time I believe it's gonna be 16. So if we take 96 divided by 16, I believe we're gonna get six. So I'll rewrite 96 as 16 times six. That's equivalent to 96. And then I will go ahead and separate and rewrite this as two square roots being multiplied square root of 16 times square root of six, and the square root of 16 simplifies to be four. So this will simplify to be four square root of six. So coming back over to my problem here, I'm gonna have eight plus or minus four times the square root of six, all divided by 10. And then once again, we can simplify this a bit further. So if I want to use my factoring strategy, I have two terms in the numerator and they have in common, if I'm looking at this eight and this four, they are having a greatest common factor of a four. So we can factor out four and we'll be left with two plus or minus the square root of six all divided by 10. And because this is multiplication, I can divide. Now four does not divide into 10 evenly, but two does, two divides into four twice, two divides into 10 five times. So you could leave your answer either as two times the quantity, two plus or minus the square root of six over five. This would certainly be acceptable. Or you could distribute the two in the numerator and go back to four plus or minus two square root of six, all divided by five, completely fine. Or if you wanted to break this into two separate terms, you could write four fifths plus or minus two square root of six over five. That would certainly be acceptable as well.